How do everybody? Hope you're all keeping well. Um, really, really, really good episode with Stephen Arthur, one of the co-creators of the show Ouija's. If you've not watched it yet, get yourself on Amazon Prime and get it watched. Big thanks as always to the sponsors that let me repair. Paul was a massive advocate of the show and we've also got a new sponsor in Dean Fleming Mortgage Broker. He is an independent mortgage broker based in Glasgow and he's got access to over 90 UK lenders helping the people of Glasgow move into their dream properties. And if you want to find out more, just search Dean Fleming Mortgage Brokers online. Thanks guys, cheers. Stephen, thank you very much for joining me. As I've said, mate, I'm, I'm pure buzzing that you've even agreed to come on. <laughs> you must be have fucking agents on the phone and all that now, you're having a big... I wish, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> so for him that doesn't know, obviously, co-creator of Ouija's if you don't know about it, get on Amazon and watch it. I'm going to dive straight into that because everybody that had messaged me was like, how do you create a comedy in Glasgow that ends up on Amazon Prime and misses everything else on the way? So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to put it out to you. How did, how did it even get to that stage? Very good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean... Obviously, we've been going for it for years. Aye. And when we originally did start out, it was, we, we did want to go down any other, well, not any other route, but we mm -hmm. did want to go down the mainstream route. Uh, route. So we just kind of started off doing the short videos. We're on mm -hmm. Facebook and um, we did get a wee bit of attention and invited into some places and uh, et cetera. And sometimes it just doesn't go anywhere. Um, so by the time we were coming towards the end of the series, um, Prime Video had become really, really popular. Aye. Like, when we started, nobody was really talking about that. It was all Netflix or mm -hmm. kind of BBC, et cetera. Aye. And then um, by the time we were finishing, everybody had Prime Video um, on their Amazon account. So mm -hmm. it's just like, it's like a submissions process. So we just got everything together and um, got it all hopefully looking as best as Aye. it can. Um, we had Graham Watt, our director, just looking into everything. He mm -hmm. looked at all the terms and conditions, all the kind of stuff that... I was too lazy to look at and um it just honestly it just got uh, so like tight and ship shape right. and shiny and thankfully when we sent it off um it got accepted first time round so when you send it off you've got like a three week waiting period mm -hmm. and um they were the longest three weeks of my life honestly <laughs> um where were you when you found out it was going to be you know what it was like there was <laughs> there was two real anti-climaxes for for right. me because um Obviously, we'd been going for about four years trying to do this. And mm -hmm. um, I always had this vision in my head of like, when we sent it off, I was like, we'll all be, we'll all be in the one room, we'll have champagne, we'll have a big party, and we'll all this and that. Aye. When it actually happened, my wee brother had COVID, so <laughs> I was in isolation. <laughs> um, Matt, he was in his own house and Graham mm -hmm. was in, he's got a studio in Stirling, so right. he was there, so it was there, Zoom. Um, oh, and George man. was there as well, so we're like, oh, great, that's that kind of submitted. And then you're just like, all right, what now? <laughs> <laughs> I cracked a wee beer while we were all on Zoom and then I was like, right, I've got work tomorrow, so I need to go. And I was like, all right, okay. So nine o'clock came, I'm just sitting myself in my room. Like, <laughs> no doing anything weird. But, um, <laughs> so that happened and then I, it was three weeks um, and it just one day, I hadn't mm. been kind of checking it and checking it and checking Aye. it and you drive yourself mental, um, try, like looking every day. Hitting refresh. Honestly, <laughs> every morning I was, I was like, ah, you need to get a life. Um, and I was just like, that one morning, I just kind of was like, I'll check it. And mm. it was there. I was just kind of like, what? <laughs> here. Um, so I was just like texting to the group chat and I said, um, I think we're on Amazon, by the way. <laughs> and like, what, what, what? <laughs> Nobody knew and people were at work. And I was like, ah, I just sent like a wee screenshot. And then it's like been approved. And um, we've been in touch with Amazon with mm. all of our press stuff. And it's all kind of real. And I was just like, because I keep kind of waiting for somebody Aye. to go, nah, uh, <laughs> no kidding on. <laughs> Take it off. See the the actual creation of Ouija's, where was the where did the inspiration come from? Why did you want to do it? Um oh God. See, going away back to originally I went to the art school, mm -hmm. straight from high school. Aye. Didn't have the best time there. Um didn't really get the experience that I wanted. Um and obviously you're coming out of like a creative subject. So Aye. I was I was doing design. Mm -hmm. Um and you're coming out of it and it was pretty apparent to me that there was nothing in Scotland and people were Aye. telling you that. And Aye. it was like, we'd all studied here, we'd all <laughs> trained here. I'm like a passionate Scotsman. I love Glasgow, mm -hmm. love the city and um, my family and friends are here. Um, but there was nothing in an, out of my class, not one person got a job in Scotland. Um, so <laughs> when I came out, the only job I got was like, um, I was working at a wholesalers. It was mm -hmm. just doing the trolleys, the, the checkout. And I just kind of 
I'd always been interested in acting and I thought I kind of good way to tell that story of like um, maybe graduates or creatives Aye. that are in Scotland or mm -hmm. in Glasgow. So I thought there must be thousands um, that don't really want to move away mm -hmm. because all through uh, uni we were always told, yeah, London, 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 mm -hmm. um, or even if you need to go to the States and all the success stories were Aye. always London. And I just wasn't really wanting to go there. Um, my uncle stays down there. Nothing Aye. against London. It's an amazing Aye. place. But I was just like, I quite, I like it here. Aye. I like being in Glasgow. Being your own town. Um, so it was just, I kind of had that idea. And then um, George, who I'm in the show with, we've been pals since we've been about 12. Mm -hmm. So he actually did go for school and study acting. Right. So it was always kind of in my head about maybe this story could be told through actors. Right. And then... Uh, just fast forward a wee bit, it was um, one of our, a couple of our pals were moving to Australia. Mm -hmm. My pal uh, Kev, he had this like going away party in his house and um, me and George were just steaming in the kitchen, man. And I just kind of like plucked up the courage. I says, look, I've got this idea, by Aye. the way. And he just went, uh, we'll see. <laughs> I was like, we'll, we'll see. We might, might, I don't know. <laughs> um, and that's just kind of how it was born. Um, so obviously like the more you get into it, the more it kind of develops Aye. and you go down certain routes and you make decisions about it. But mm -hmm. In a, nut, actually in a nutshell, that mm. long-winded story is how we got to kind of Aye. the idea about it. And do you think that that kind of path you faced when you, you left your study and you're trying to get somewhere to work in that and there's no that many opportunities, do you think that's still the case or do you think it's changed over the years now or is it still that kind of hard to get something here? Um, the more, back then, it only got worse, I would say. And I was looking at that in terms of like, I studied design, so I was looking at that kind of thing. Um, and as time went on, there was a lot of companies shutting down mm -hmm. um, and were obviously progression towards like the, the lockdown and stuff. And there was a lot right. of companies, unfortunately, were like downsizing or going bust or moving mm -hmm. premises, etc. So like, I probably know the best person to ask about that. Um, but just in terms of like getting a job, like af right. after I left that, um, like I was unemployed for a bit and right. I was just like, I was trying to get anything. Right. Honestly, I've just um like I worked a job uh, with my mum in an office when I was like 17 during the summer and mm -hmm. I always thought, oh, I can't do this for right. the rest of my life. Um, and I went away to art school and then see when I finished art school, I was like, I would bite like <laughs> <laughs> I would honestly take that job in right. a heartbeat right, right now, Monday to Friday, and I don't have like, give me it right now. But um and then five months later I ended up in bar work, so which is where I stayed for the next six or seven year Aye. so that was that was kind of what happened with me and were you still trying to when you were in the, the kind of bar work industry were you still trying to get back into kind of acting and, and different things like that at that time or did you just switch off completely it was actually seeking back into bar work that's when i thought i'll maybe try college because mm -hmm. obviously like um we're lucky enough obviously up here to have free education Aye. but i'd used that <laughs> up with the, the art school right so i was like right maybe save a bit of money and try and just pay my own way through right. acting college and then mm -hmm. um, i can't even remember applying i can't even remember <laughs> why but I, I ended up going to motherwell right. um, uh, which is now new college lanarkshire but um i went out there and i had honestly never didn't you know drama was a subject at school we mm -hmm. didn't have it i hadn't really been to any drama classes mm -hmm. um george had told me a bit about it although right. i think he spent more time out and about <laughs> um, the social side. Enjoying yourself. Enjoying yourself, <laughs> right. um, So, no, I, I just went back and um, just paid my own fees. Mm -hmm. um, but a month, like, in a direct debit. And I, I went into what turned out to be three years of college at then, then acting. Aye. So, because obviously I thought, yeah, kind of got a job in design, so I'll make things easier for myself mm -hmm. and go into an acting Aye. industry where I kind of got a job. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but no, that was great, honestly. And um, I worked in the bar. So, mm -hmm. it was, um, I was just like, the way it worked out, working weekends in a bar and then kind of Monday to Thursday aye. going into acting college. Aye, so it, do it, was, it was a good time actually, aye. And was it just as tough in the acting industry to get work? Um, I mean, the simple answer is yeah. Uh, I was just really lucky. Yeah. Like, really lucky. <clears throat> um, I, so obviously you have your kind of end of year showcase with the main aims to try and get an agent. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't get an agent. Right. So just, for MD watching as I never got an agent, but mm -hmm. during the year I managed to get an audition for some like an open audition. Aye. And I managed to get a show um called I Ran with a Gang. So that was right. about the the Bay City Rollers, like right. a Scottish um, band for the 70s. Mm -hmm. So I was just super lucky in this in the sense that our first show was going to be in Canada, right, in Toronto. Okay. So I came like out of college thinking, oh my God, 
it's straight in a rehearsals for that. And then mm. we went away off there and I thought, my God, acted. This is easy. <laughs> was, this is brilliant. And cause um, one of the original rollers, Alan uh, Longmuir, who's right. sadly no longer with us, but he was in the, he, well, he was part of the show. So oh, he was brilliant. at the end. So the fans Aye. flocked. So you go out there and um, I'm like signing autographs and that. And I was just like, doing all this stuff and you're getting catted about and wow. radios and that. Aye. So I did that and I thought, right, I'm a big shot. And then literally, literally two days later, I was working in the bar still flying high off us. And a guy caught me a wee prick because uh, I gave him soda water instead of lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, right, maybe like the, phone, the, the phone does the ring for ages. Like, right, maybe this is as easy as I thought. But, um, but no, it's, it's, it's everybody knows. It's cliche. Aye. It's so, so tough. Um, I just get really lucky. But um, I always I always had the bar job. Mm-hmm. So I was lucky <clears> in the sense that they would allow me to take time Aye. off here and there. Aye. And that's probably what I would say to people that are um, they're maybe starting out, they're still trying mm-hmm. out, just like remember, like you need to have a life as well. So Aye. maybe have a bar job or another job to keep, keep you going um, when the phone doesn't ring. How did you find that? I've always been curious about this for people in the acting industry or, or any kind of level in the entertainment industry. See when the phone isn't ringing or you're going for auditions and you're not getting callbacks, how hard is it to keep yourself motivated and keep yourself going? <sighs> I mean, for me, I can't speak for everybody, but for me personally, it got harder as I got older, mm-hmm. um, which was probably the same way, like, I'm not saying I was abused all the time in the bar, but you know Aye. that way when you're young, somebody calls you something, you're like, Aye, very good, don't Aye. you go, you got, but Aye. as you get a bit older and you get a bit more maybe respect for yourself, it's, you start to get a bit more sensitive towards Aye. it. So um, I was fortunate enough. I took one year out where I did act full time and I was getting my own stuff and I was mm-hmm. doing a lot of independence. And then I was fortunate enough to get signed by an agent who mm-hmm. kind of said to me, look, you need to be keeping your time free to go to actual auditions. Like Aye. it might get you a career mm-hmm. job rather than just these independents you're doing. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, so you go back to the bar. Um, but it's, it is really tough. Um, I'm not going to lie. Everybody's different. Um, it affects people differently. Yeah. It's, it's annoying, it's tough. It's some things you think are like, I'm perfect for this. Aye. And you go in and you're nowhere near it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the only thing I would say for like, maybe aspiring actors watching this is like, a lot of the time in my, my experience, it sort of works out. Mm-hmm. It's like you don't get something, Aye. but it's maybe because there's something else in the corner. Or there's that filming period, you get like a great theatre show that mm-hmm. you're, you're suited to. So, Aye. But yeah, I'm not going to lie. It is tough. It is really tough. Um, and I mean, rejection's Aye. tough at the best of times so see when you're out there and mm-hmm. you're, you're trying and you're trying it's, and i'm not i wouldn't <laughs> i'm not a success story at all i auditioned for loads of stuff and mm-hmm. like the next thing you see it on the telly and you're like ah i never got that then <laughs> it's just, that's, does that's that just get any easier the rejection side of it the older you get i'd say it gets tougher Aye. to be honest i say it gets a lot tougher um the industry as a whole thankfully are kind of taking in people's mental health um, yeah now as well to do with it because mm-hmm. it's obviously like it's it's like anything if you go and a dish, uh, interview for a job Aye. you're going to want to know if you've got it or not Aye. so they are aware of that now and like um things are i think improving mm-hmm. um so but for me no i never got any easy it got harder to be honest <laughs> as I, I got older i suppose that's the kind of thing as well because as, as you've touched on there a lot of people won't just see like oh that person's created a program it's on amazon it must just be must just be as easy as is that and it just gets picked up automatically but for every kind of one success, you probably get about 20 rejections oh. tucked in behind it. Oh, loads. Aye. Honestly, honestly, Aye. I can tell you so many stories. Um, of just things I've auditioned for. And it's like the the audition process, it's like we Ouija's and stuff and mm-hmm. maybe we well, they're actually kind of embellish it. It's Aye. actually like the majority of the time, folk are really nice. Mm-hmm. Casting directors are really nice. Everybody wants you to do well. Um, and it's maybe just, a variety of things like mm-hmm. somebody else is better suited somebody Aye. else's availability where they are geographically it just it's a variety of reasons so you mm-hmm. you can't take it personally Aye. but you do Aye. so Aye. <laughs> that's that's pretty much where i stand on it Aye. and uh, we were talking about just before we came in there obviously in glasgow your friends family have got an inclination if you're in an industry that isn't providing a steady income you're not really doing anything yep. or or what you're doing is questionable yeah how did you find that side of things really? Like, because you must have get people saying to you, oh, what is it you're doing with yourself or what's happening? But how is that kind of side of it? For me, I started out very much like that. And it's obviously no a kind of slag. Aye. My family or friends Aye. or that. But pe- if people, 
are used to just a kind of um, you're just for a working class background. Aye. They're used to you're going out Monday to Friday or whatever, mm-hmm. and um, you maybe that's no for you. So you, you step outside that and try something else. Mm-hmm. It's like everything; people just need to get used to it. Um, so the majority of my family are just kind of like don't want to say normal jobs, like just like plumber, uh, tradesman, Aye. and things like that. And, Aye. And then I'm out there trying to like <laughs> do a show about these Aye. struggling actors when I'm struggling <laughs> as an actor and I'm working in a karaoke bar. So it's um, it's just a, it's a progression. So Aye. like obviously like right now, I'm lucky enough that like my family and friends mm-hmm. support what we're Aye. doing and like um, they're, they're the biggest supporters of mm-hmm. Ouija's type of thing. Um, but I starting out like Aye. it's like everything. If people aren't used to it or they don't know something about it, they just they're going to question and then maybe going to be concerned about you no. um, they're maybe like that. if you're no making your way in the world mm-hmm. I use that term very loosely no. um, compared to maybe your friends no. like all my mates um, they've kind of like got their own houses now and mm-hmm. they've, they've been in jobs for a while which they're working their way up and no. uh, things are happening so no. when it comes to you you can get a wee bit down about it and mm-hmm. think oh, what, am I, what am I doing no. I, it's just about keeping the focus and it's it's about what you want to do with your life now you know, what somebody else thinks you should do and did you ever get points where you were like oh, fuck, i'm done with this aye aye, aye. Every, every second week <laughs> <laughs> every rent payment <laughs> aye. um honestly yes i did it's just a case of if you've gone into it you yeah. know you've gone into it for a reason yeah. and if you're if you're progressing through and you've got people that believe in mm-hmm. you um you've got a good support network yeah you, you keep pushing through but yeah a lot of the time and a lot of the, as i said when i got when i was getting older the bar work was weighing on me a bit Aye. heavy and you're no seeing um your family and friends as much and you're maybe finding it hard to maintain a relationship or mm-hmm. just things like that so you Aye. just think oh, there's got to be an easier way um if i maybe just would work here or work there but Aye. i mean i say that and then like even my attempts to get jobs like mm-hmm. that is so so difficult just Aye. like if you I, I would have liked to have gone into like admin or whatever mm-hmm. but it's like it's so difficult to get these, these types of jobs, as, as a lot of folk um, will probably know. Aye, and I think the reason I was asking that is because in obviously in the first episode when the both of you are talking about paying your rent and stuff like that, that probably is a lot of people in that industry's Aye. lives, and they, obviously they'll pay that month's rent, but where's next month's coming for? Fuck knows, ask me again in three weeks. Exactly. That's it's that it. whole kind of merry-go-round, isn't it? And it's the kind of, it's the, it's the strange thing of like, when I was doing it for that year-long period, it's like, you actually don't know where your next Aye. paycheck's coming from. Like it mm-hmm. sounds a wee bit cliche to Aye. say, but it's like you don't. It's like you're no, you're no got a, a bill coming in, uh, a check coming in the twenty third, and then you can pay things. It's literally like you're invoicing, and you don't know when you're going to get things. So Aye. it's it's, but you can make that work. There's, no, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that if that if that suited me at the time. So Aye. and do you think that keeps? keeps you hungry in that sense because you ha- you're always having to kind of <laughs> yeah, very aye, well I suppose <laughs> aye. in the literal sense as well but you're you can't really if you were in a, a Monday to Friday 95 job you can lay off the kind of pump the brakes a wee bit because you know you're still going to get paid aye. whereas with you you're, you're going to have to go hammer and tongs constantly aye it's, it's quite it's kind of like that and obviously with social media mm-hmm. um, coming in now so when I was in college it still wasn't it was a big thing, but I think people were not utilizing it as much Aye. as they are now. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were kind of like made aware of like, um, yeah, you've got to be kind of on Twitter, get your website Aye. out there, get your, be going to these things, etc. Mm-hmm. just to give you that kind of uh, edge on people. And there is actors and, and creatives out there that are amazing at it. Mm-hmm. Um, I never really loved it, to be honest. It was, wasn't really for me. And I think it's a be a double-edged sword now if you're, yeah. if you're great at doing that sort of mm-hmm. stuff and you're looking to get into the acting industry Aye. or whatever. Just go for it and, and put yourself out there. Mm-hmm. Um, other people that feel as if, like me, that feel as if they're too old for it, like they just, <laughs> I, w- I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother anymore. But um, aye, it's that kind of side of it. I would aye. say. Do you enjoy the interaction side of it? Because obviously, we 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 just grown new. You must get <laughs> more and more people, and it, like we touched on it before we came on of the kind of from the bizarre to the even more bizarre <laughs> coming into you. But how do you find that side of it? See, when we first started out. It was, it was obviously you're putting yourself out there on Facebook or Aye. we were putting myself out on Facebook. So you're just trying to do something that's like, you're already scared to put yourself Aye. out there, but you're just trying to do something. Aye. You're trying to harm them. <laughs> I honestly wish I'd have saved some of the comments that we got. It was Aye. so strange. Just the, the, some of, like, don't get me wrong, load of people supporting us, but Aye. you always zero in and the wee Aye. one that's like slagging. Just the slaggings we would Aye. get. And it was like, 
Um, everybody that's done it, like, um, we just talk with our natural accent. Aye. So I've no asked, we didn't ask anybody to change when you get, so one comment like, not a Glaswegian in sight. The next one is like, what are you hamming up that accent for? Then another person, I can't understand you because you're so Glaswegian. <laughs> it's just like, it's are you okay? Like, we <laughs> don't really know what to do here. So it's crazy that way. Um, but I've, as we've released the series, man, it's been, it's been brilliant. You know? I mean, it's just been overwhelmingly positive. Um, people like messaging the account, messaging mm -hmm. us privately. It's Aye. been some of the folk that have reached out. It's just been un unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And um, I, it's like, as we were discussing earlier, you do get some kind of weird requests. Um, we'll asking for things, but you're just like, ah, sorry, Aye. but no, Aye. <laughs> we, and we won't go into that. It's trying to be kind of delicate about Aye. it. And because obviously it's, if somebody reaches out to you in the first place, it's took a lot of balls. Yeah, yeah. But you do look at some DMs and go, Jesus, <laughs> wow. I know. Most of them are from my pals. <laughs> <laughs> you're still doing this. <laughs> <You're shite. laughs> but that must have been good for you as well in the sense of, when that actually hit Amazon, everybody can see everything that's been in your mind, how you've brought it through that story, and it's then got that end product, and it, it's out there. Aye. I mean, it's it's interesting in the sense that, like, it, it is out there, so you're like, oh, do you remember that, say, that Tuesday night, mm -hmm. where I was working all day, and then we came in, and then we drove out to, like, Cumberland Old, and we had to Aye. do this or that, or there was, like, a... One time we filmed in like this old shopping centre that was abandoned and it was like the middle of the night freezing and you're just like this and that. Of course, folk are just like, oh, you're texting, oh, is that what you're doing tonight? Oh, that's, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Nobody really gets it because they've not seen the scripts, etc. Um, so I, it, it was it was quite good. I mm -hmm. just being able to like show people that look, that's, that's what we were doing. So Aye. It's, it's been four years. So I, that's it. I'm labour all of it. That's exactly what it is, man. <laughs> Did you get to a point where even maybe at the writing stage or when you started filming it where you thought this has got the potential to be, be pretty big here, this could go on a TV or, or on a, a, a channel like Amazon? Uh, no, no, to be honest, no. Um, the, I mean, the, for me, like, the best part of it is writing. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, Matt and I, will, he plays Paul, we'll write the scripts and it's just, it's, it's the most boring thing Aye. you can think of. It's just us two thinking, thinking we're funny, writing stuff <laughs> down. I mean, one night we were both, we had a Friday night off. And I think we, we were asked to do like a 10 pager for one of the channels about Ouija's that mm -hmm. didn't go anywhere, but we were like in my, I was back with my mum and dad at the time, so in my bedroom arguing about where a comma would go <laughs> in a sentence about how the character would Aye. deliver it. And I was like, we are so boring, man. We were in my twenties at the time. Aye. I was like, oh, let's spice things up. We'll go and get a chippy. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It was so boring. Aye. But that that was the best thing. But no, like you're out there and obviously you believe in it. Aye. And it's um we were really lucky in the sense that a lot of the crew we had mm -hmm. really believed in it. And it's yeah. um, it's a core unit that we've got. So we'll use it was the same people that worked Aye. on it throughout Aye. for us. So we were just really lucky that they believed in it. And um, mm -hmm. obviously I thought it could go somewhere and I wanted it to, Aye. but I never thought like it would gather any attention not at all Aye. not at all and is any of it based on your own personal experiences <laughs> got to ask Aye. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> do you know what like i don't know if you should say this or no but there's like a, there's a scene in the last episode with george um where he he meets someone who's mm -hmm. getting known quite well with right um it doesn't quite pan out and that's actually something that happened to me in the ABC in Glasgow. Right. So if anybody's watched it, maybe you don't know what I'm talking about. I won't go into any more detail. Um, but no, a lot of it. Um, I, I haven't ever eaten pie and beans for <laughs> breakfast. Um, That's a question which, at the window. Uh, that question, <laughs> I. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. But I, just just, just a few things. Um, do you know what? See, compared to me, Steve's probably had a good acting career. Mm -hmm. Like some of the things that he's right. been involved with. Um, because obviously, like, we'll embellish the stories he gets mm -hmm. cast in an advert and then he's in a war film, right. um, along with George. But, um, ah, it's just kind of like taking things that you think mm -hmm. embellishing that a wee bit. Um, the call center scenes when I was at uni the first time, I worked in a call center mm -hmm. um, and it was it was nowhere near as bad as what they Aye. go through. Aye. Um, but you just kind of like embellish the story a bit. To, to I've worked in a call center fun. in that first episode, is defo relatable. Ah, you got to be shit up on the board and all that, and it's, it's crazy, <laughs> isn't it? It's it's honestly it's so strange. Like, um, his George, he's he's uh, in a call center there now, and he's he's working for home, right? Um, so we did a kind of wee spin off series called Better Call Paul, where he he kind of works for home, seeing how that is. But I, I just 
I walked in it for a couple of years and like looking back, it was actually all right, even though I was I was cold calling people. Um so oh, it's like man. I know. But it wasn't the other too bad, but you Aye. just take these stories and just the same for the bar. It's, it's just the, the kind of way we work, I guess. Aye. What's the worst job you've had? The worst job? Oh god. Acting wise, I actually ended up there's a shopping centre in Kilmarnock. I think I think it's called the Burns Mall. I think. I ended up walking about that dressed as like a Valentine's angel. <laughs> <laughs> just annoying people, basically, <laughs> to be honest. Like, right. Just annoying people um, handing out stuff. And, you know, that way, like, slave to the money. Like, the Aye. money was all right. So Aye. I was down there doing it, man. And there's getting another wee person that's with you, like, making sure you're all right. And Aye. I was just walking about and, like, I was getting, I'm, thinking, I'm, I'm just annoying people here, man. Aye. And then... <laughs> Just like a wee boy. This isn't me making this up or embellishing <laughs> it. A wee boy. He just walked by. He's like, you look like a pure dick, mate. And I was just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. And I, I can still, honestly, I can clear as day because I was going to work in the bar that night and I was sitting at the um, the train station going back to Glasgow. Mm -hmm. And I just looked at a picture of myself. Like, oh, it's just, you just look like a pure dick. <laughs> a wee boy's right. <laughs> All these years later, he was right. We get me watching this. Oh, that was me. <laughs> ah, so that was pretty bad. Um, what about outside acting? Me and George actually got a job when we were 17. I don't know if you remember Dunn's Stores. Aye. It was in Sucky Hall Street in the corner. Yep. Uh, we worked in there, man. Right. So I was in menswear and he was in home. What would you call that? Home decor or something Aye, like that. He was right, in like, the, okay. home, the home section. Um, that was pretty shit, man. Right. That was really shit. And I thought I was bad at my job until I went up and saw George. <laughs> he actually used to have this thing, like the hours would drag in and he used to have like a wee sheet that he just would write five minutes on. So he'd made up like eight hours of five minutes <laughs> and he used to cross them off. <laughs> I was like, this is, this is mental. And then uh, one time there was like a, at menswear at the back, there was like a phone in the wall. Right. And it used to connect to the store at Parkhead, but... We were only Christmas temps and I was just terrified because every time that phone went, it meant you had to go into like the system and see if we had the thing they were looking for and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And I avoided it for ages and then I, it was ringing and ringing on my shift. I was ignoring it, it was ringing, ringing. I went, oh, I'm going to just, I'm going to just have to answer it. <laughs> and then I answered it and it was George. <laughs> and it was the night of the, do you mind Scotland played Italy in the, was oh, like the Euros or the World Cup play or the Euros playoff or something? Oh, Hamden? We, I, we yep. were, and it, I just said, I went, uh, Hi there, I'm done. Suck it out. He went, Stevie boy, <laughs> Scotland have scored. <laughs> You're just like, what? <laughs> How did you even get his number? <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's the God's honest truth, man. So I was quite eventful in there. Um, and just another daft story about that. My manager asked us to, um, there was like table displays with mm -hmm. obviously clothes on it and he asked Aye. us to take it apart. So obviously that just means to clear the hand let for the clothes the next day but for some reason I don't, and to this day I don't know why me and George thought he meant to take a table apart <laughs> so we ended up staying about an hour after my shift and going and getting screwdrivers with people <laughs> and that and like un doing the entire thing and we almost <laughs> got to it and then my manager finally came down to the basement and the men's wearing and he's like that. no <laughs> No, <laughs> like, you're just screaming 17 year old boys and he's just screaming no at us and I was like are we no meant to do this? <laughs> like, just get out of the babies. <laughs> just stood it scurrying down the street thinking, what happened there? But uh, it's just it was that was uh, that, that makes it sound kind of fun, but it just definitely wasn't it. No, nah, if a retail's uh, a right a passage oh, for everybody, oh, I think. Mental, man. You've got to go through it. That's it. Absolutely. <laughs> but. Oh man. I I I can a question that comes in quite a lot from kind of all industries. And you'll probably, you'll still feel it just now. Would, would you find are the biggest challenges to your job? Do you know what? It's probably, see just like stability in your life. Um, mm -hmm. There is, don't get me wrong, there is success stories. And there's even people that I went to college with, they've, they come out of college and they go straight into like television or right. um, my old flatmate got an amazing job. It was a world tour. Mm -hmm. Really amazing, amazing jobs. And that's, that's amazing. But um, I'll try and say amazing a few more times there. <laughs> um, but if you're at a level like I, was you're just a job and actor so it mm -hmm. is finding that balance to try and pay your, your bills and like, mm -hmm. let's be honest we're all we're all working to live and all living Aye. work Aye. so it, that was the kind of thing so i obviously kept the bar job as i've mentioned about mm -hmm. a million times just to 
to tide me over right. and it helps actually keep you keep you sane right um it does get a bit tough when as i was saying the phone stops ringing so right. i used to get out of the bar quite a lot for pantos mm -hmm. and then um, one year i never got one and it's like anybody that's worked in hospitality at christmas time right. it's just it's, it's off off the scale right. crazy especially in glasgow city center um so that was quite a big chance for me and mentally like keeping going mm -hmm. and realizing why you got into it and right. just why you love it and remembering the good times and just mm -hmm. keeping going um for me personally Aye. it's quite quite tough especially the older i got Aye. um but yeah there's a lot of obstacles but i mean it's, it's not all doom and gloom when you get Aye. there it's the most amazing job in the world you know you can pay to do stuff like that it's just just crazy i that i suppose that's our side of it because you must have kind of moments where you do pinch yourself and you're like i'm getting paid for this like i'm actually getting a living honestly it's amazing it's just it, it, it's crazy because obviously like you're just getting paid to like play Aye. obviously we've, we've all done jobs that Aye. are really difficult and there, there is jobs out there that are, are, are really hard grafting but it's just like you can take the work seriously but you just don't take yourself seriously you just Aye. go in and like i mean we've all got stories of people we've worked with but most Aye. people are, are lovely and sound and just have a really great time you make make friends and at the end of the day you're get a show that you can Aye. go out you can invite your friends and family to and Aye. you get paid it's, it's, it's mental man. Aye. and see for the obviously the, the valentine's heart aside see when you are looking at jobs like obviously before wages etc did you just go for everything or did you have an idea in your mind of things that you wanted to do specifically or how what was your approach to it early on everything Aye. um especially when i went full time mm -hmm. um, when i left the bar um everything Aye. absolutely everything man um and i got i actually got a lot of, a lot of decent jobs a lot of commercial jobs as well Aye. which just would help pay the rent um so i absolutely everything mm -hmm. then the older i got i started to kind of pick and choose because one you're going to burn yourself out Aye. but two there's just sometimes you don't want to do certain Aye. kind of things i mean it's probably it's like cliche to think like you dress up as the elf or something just, or it's, it's just like it happens you know Aye. what i mean but well, if the money's there, a bit older, you're like, i can't really be doing with that Aye. i just can't be bothered so again make myself sound as if i'm about 60 here <laughs> Aye, but when, when i was getting older i was like no i'm going to pick and choose here um and that was that was good for a while and it was um it was going okay up until kind of lockdown so and that, i suppose that's another thing as well how how did that side get impact because it, it, there was a point where everything just shuddered to a halt and for someone who doesn't have a regular income at the best of times, how did you get through that kind of period? For me, I was I was I was one of the lucky ones. Um, I was working full time in the bar, right? And I had done I can't remember what the deal was, so we were getting eighty percent of your wage. Right. But I had worked there for years, so I, I was over the six month threshold. Um, so when lockdown hit, I actually was really lucky, and I was mm -hmm. still getting my wage. Right. Unfortunately, I actually late twenty nineteen, I was. Uh, casting like a, a british tour of a play and i mm -hmm. was like oh amazing money was, was great and mm -hmm. great people and Aye. i was so buzzing about it and we got two rehearsals in and then um obviously 2020 happened um in that side of things it, 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 the funding got pulled Aye. so um just on a personal note like i was okay like Aye. i know a lot a lot of actors and musicians who Aye. um really struggled and had and, and took other jobs mm -hmm. which not in their field but of course they've got to do it to make a living Aye. um but for me honestly i just got really lucky and obviously with lockdown it was really bad and the mm -hmm. pandemic of course we don't need to go into that it was really bad but for me it was a kind of wake-up call Aye. and then we wages wise mm -hmm. that actually pushed everything so that's probably why we got it out a wee bit later because right. it just pushed everything because Aye. everybody was everybody was so scared about what was going to happen but mm -hmm. for me it was a kind of reset button and a wake-up call Aye. and uh, just getting things into perspective and, and, and thinking about what i had worried about because i mean at the bar i was probably i'd worked the bar so long by that point i was just kind of mentally drained by Aye. it Aye. and i know it's like there's obviously as again there's going to be difficult jobs out there but i was just so Aye. mentally drained and when i got locked down mm -hmm. i actually started writing again mm -hmm. and matt and i have actually got a couple of projects so it, mm -hmm. it worked out okay um, right. for me but of course it was a, a terrible situation but um i was lucky in right. sense. so that's why i would always say right. people that are like um pursuing acting maybe have another mm -hmm. source of income Aye. and are you still in the bar or have you finished that no now? actually um so see before see when they all went back mm -hmm. i left and i got a job in um greenock 
COVID testing centre. Ah, right, so, okay. So uh, I was in there for nine months right. for the second lockdown. Aye. So that was obviously a crazy situation. Aye. But honestly, I met some of the most amazing people down there. Aye. It was a, obviously a very surreal experience, but it was, a, it was a just a, a really kind of great time to be with those folk Aye. and to, to keep the morale up. Aye. There was all sorts of things going on. And I, I spent nine months down there, I even worked, uh, worked Christmas Day. Oh. And it was like that. Um, I just never thought because it was a converted like bingo hall. Aye. I just thought I'd never thought I'd spend Christmas Aye. Day in a bingo hall in Greenock. Aye. It's not the worst night that I've ever sure, had during, during a I mean, pandemic. <laughs> during that's a pandemic. a bizarre situation. But, uh, but uh, that's, that's, that's where I was um, uh, up until recently. Aye. Wow. Wow. Well, and see from the from a writing point of view, where does your inspiration come from? Oof. Um... So, I think obviously we had the kind of experience of the acting world Aye. to draw upon. Mm -hmm. But what I quite liked about the way Ouija's developed, because um, Ouija's was a thing and it was predominantly about actors, and then uh, Matt came and uh, came mm -hmm. on board. And we actually said, oh, we're going to kind of maybe explore that, will just be like the kind of backbone, and we'll Aye. explore other avenues mm -hmm. through the other characters. So it's like, so Lucy. Um, she's in a zero hour contract job mm -hmm. um, Barry's trying to be a poet Sapphire's at art school um, and uh, Paul he's working in the call centre obviously mm -hmm. with Steve so I quite liked that it. it was just going to be about life as Aye. well um, and the, the acting would be a kind of backbone and narrative for mm -hmm. it so we actually just had a lot of kind of similar stories about Aye. like what we had gone through and mm -hmm. what we thought um, and being creative and Aye. we're all lived and studied and socialised in Glasgow so we just wanted to show that side of it but mm -hmm. um, for a lot of other projects we just take inspiration from anywhere like um, we've, we've written another series and it takes place in different flats of a high rise and it's right. just different kind of things it's Aye. not specifically about acting it's just mm -hmm. about the short stories so, right. um, but what we usually do is like one of us will come to the other one with an idea and you'll say that's good or the 99% of the times it's that shite are you are honest with each other in that sense? You just go, oh, that's shite. No having that. It's <laughs> awful, <laughs> 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 man. <laughs> Especially when we were doing Ouija's. See, like, I actually, I've actually got like about probably 19 scenes that right. I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> this, is a, this is a one. And he's like, nah, it's just no work. And it even happened last week. <laughs> we were writing something and I was like, yeah. And he was like, oh, maybe we'll see. And then I went back and looked at it and you're like, yeah, okay. Aye, grudgingly. Uh, <laughs> the way it is. Oh, man. Love that. What's the what's the worst audition you've ever had? There's got to be one. Aye. Yeah, there is. I mean, as I said earlier, 99% of these things are brilliant. Um, in fact, aye, do you know I've got one? It's, <laughs> it's for a TV show right. that I think is still on there now. Right. And the lead actor is a Glaswegian vet. Right. I can't even remember what the show's called, but I'm sure it's still on. Aye. I just want to say the name in case. <laughs> but it was um, it was in Glasgow, the auditions. Right. And I got sent, usually get like sent sides, like mm -hmm. uh, like scripts Aye. for TV. Normally you'll learn it, but I get sent um, five scenes. So five scripts. Mm -hmm. I was like, what the hell, man? So I was like, oh, I can't even, I'm not going to learn these. Aye. And I, but I was looking through them and I got to one and it was like, I'm going to get the terminology completely wrong here, <laughs> but the vet whilst talking the same lines to other people he was helping a cow give give birth right I don't know what it was, it was like i was like oh my god and he's actually like there's this there's like physicality involved right. there's the whole thing and i was like this is going to be hard to do Aye. in an audition room with a script in my hand Aye. so whatever i went away and people were lovely mm -hmm. and like that like you might have noticed there was uh there's five scenes but one of them's a wee bit mm, i think it might be a bit difficult to do so this was scene number four right I think it might be a bit difficult to do and i went oh i says thank god i says i was going to say that as well i was like i'm oh, we having a laugh about it right oh brilliant aye and then she's like aye so we'll just uh, we'll just uh, skip by scene two and i was oh. like scene two. <laughs> a minute. and i was like so scene two was like one there's like, he's at a dinner party and there's like four or five characters i'm like all right so that's that's too hard to do but after <laughs> so that she goes like we get to this we get to scene four and she's like right so have you any idea what you're maybe going to do here? Are you going to use something as the right. cow? And I was like, ah, eh. And I'm not embellishing this at all, I swear to God. I just looked to the side and they had brought like a, it was almost, it was like a briefcase. Right. But except instead of like clipping opened, it would just kind of open like that. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no way, man. 
I says, aye, aye, aye. I thought I might just use your, uh, your briefcase if that's all right. She's like, yeah, okay. I can, I can see what you're doing. I can see what you're doing. So, honestly, I'm here. The camera's here. Right. The guy that I'm supposed to be reading the lines with standing is sitting here looking at me uh-huh. and I've got my script here in my hand. <laughs> and my bloody right hand inside a briefcase <laughs> try to pretend that there's a cow giving birth. Right. And do you know what? I, I kept it together, right? It was awful. And I would love to see the footage of it, but he, he, he's a bit like, oh, blah, blah, blah. What are you making? I'm like, yep, that sounds great. How are you getting on there, man? And you're just like, this is, this is awful. And you can see at the corner of your eyes, you're just going, this guy's fucking shit, man. Like, just... and, I, and then I go through it and they're like, right, we'll be in touch. I saw that programme. My mum and dad were actually watching it and it came on Channel 5 and I was like, I think I auditioned for that and I was like, all right, see when you get to scene five or scene four, give me a shout, we'll see what see what happens. But that's bizarre. That was awful, man. Really bad. You must get points for your in auditions going, nah, what the hell? Like when that point she's like, what you gonna use as a prop? And you're like, nah, it's this it's it's meant like as I say, a lot of ninety nine percent are absolutely fine. Do you know right. what I mean? They're, they're, they're just good people right. wanting to do a good job. But um couple of the panto auditions are quite strange. Mm-hmm. And I I kinda pride myself on thinking I'm an okay dancer. <laughs> And then you get to these things, and then um, I think I was once I was asked to bring along sheet music, right? And I thought I'd printed out the sheet music to the the uh, Oasis song "Half the World Away," right? And then that, and then she was playing it, and I was like, I don't, I don't, I never said a word. <laughs> and the guys just kind of like, Are "You got, you got to sing." I was just like, I "Don't actually know what song this is." <laughs> I was like, all right. And then he's like, right, okay, so we're just going to do um, a wee kind of simple dance move. And then he does this like, quadruple move thing. And you're just like, <laughs> I, I shouldn't have put that in the CV. <laughs> should not have put that in the CV. It was like, joy for friends, like putting everything on his CV. <laughs> but aye, but, but, uh, they're, they're, the, they're the ones that stand out over oh, the years. That aye. is brilliant. Always ask people when they came on, obviously, we, we, we look at, the, the success that everybody's had and, and how they've got to that point but what I also try and find out is the kind of major low points that people have had as well and how they've kind of bounced back from it but for you is there any that really stick out in your mind at points through your kind of acting life? Um, I think mental health is a big one mm-hmm. and it probably wouldn't surprise you to hear that Aye. and um, thankfully now we're living in a time where it is openly discussed and Aye. I'm honestly like I, I know people have got different opinions about it at the moment, but I'm I'm so so grateful that it's a thing because I now feel more comfortable in in speaking to people because mm-hmm. I feel as if I went through quite a rough ride in my mid twenties, mm-hmm. um, and obviously with Ouija's we have got a core group that are all very Aye. open and honest about mental health. I'm lucky enough to have friends like that as well. Aye. But during like my mid twenties, I think when things weren't as out in the open. Um, things weren't as discussed no. and I also felt kind of as if no I don't I don't feel that way there's no reason to feel that way like I never had a bad childhood or anything. No. Just, you don't have the, the right to feel like that but at the end of the day I think you need to take stock that things in the acting world or things or rejections were having an effect on your mental health no. and, um, it's an easy thing to go down like in a path of a drink or whatever mm-hmm. and um Especially I was living in the city centre at the time and it's just, you can get quite lonely and frustrated and Aye. it's, it's, do you know what? It's just like, let's just put it out there. Like everybody's going to get jealous um, of different people getting different jobs and mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's only human nature. Aye. And um, every time you just see the door slammed in your face, it's very, mm-hmm. very difficult. Um, and obviously whatever you're going through elsewhere in your life, maybe your personal life Aye. or other things weren't quite happening for you there, it's, mm-hmm. it's really difficult. So yeah, just in the kind of, I'd say in my mid-twenties, that really kind of was difficult for mm-hmm. me. And um, I was really lucky, but I met um, a wonderful person at my college who actually helped me with that and mm-hmm. guided me to, to speak to somebody, which Aye. was amazing. Um, one of the best things I've ever done. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, through that, I learned that it's like, no, people, people can, you can feel upset. You have the Aye. right to feel this way Aye. if you react to a certain situation or something that's happened to you mm-hmm. you've got the right to feel yeah. upset or emotional and mm-hmm. you don't need to hide from people and yeah people will genuinely in my experience be quite accommodating for mm-hmm. you and will help you yeah and just just talking mm-hmm. it just helped me so much 
So I think, aye, if there is anybody that's out there that's, that's maybe having a tough time with mm-hmm. it, obviously lockdown with a lot yeah. of actors, thankfully it's coming back now, but a lot of actors maybe have struggled through mm-hmm. just just speaking, yeah, um, making yourself, or people will make themselves available to you. Yeah. Um, but aye, the, it, was, it was pretty much to do with that with me. Yeah. Um, and just kind of like, even something as daft as you feel as if you're just like only working in the bar. Like I felt as if yeah. that was defining me and that yeah. was a time when I was getting a lot of grief with some punters and it's mm-hmm. like it's hard to take as I was aye. talking about earlier. Aye. So, um, and then you would maybe get that job mm-hmm. you're like sky high and it'll last for two months and then you're right back down. Yeah. And it's just, it was, yeah. I found that a bit tough to deal with. Um, and see then with the rejections more harsher because there wasn't really a, a lack of understanding around people's mental health and their reaction to these kind of situations. I would, I would say so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was, it was pretty, uh, it was pretty, pretty tough to take. Mm-hmm. Um, and if, obviously, I'm, I can only speak for myself, yeah. but you do feel a wee bit embarrassed when, like, you text into the group chat, say, mm-hmm. "Oh, I've got an addition for this right. and that," and it's things people have heard of. Mm-hmm. Everybody's buzzing for right. you, you know, like you're perfect, and it's mm-hmm. like you're lucky enough to. I was lucky enough, or I am lucky enough to have that friend group that will support me, and then yeah. you go. You think you've smashed it, and then it's like you don't hear anything. Mm-hmm. It's a rejection. Like, oh, okay, another one. And it's that kind of thing. Yeah. You start to feel as if like God, these people are going to start thinking I'm pure shite. At this. Yeah, you know what I mean. Are you just, feeling pressure from that point yeah, yet as well? Um, as well as like like my work were very supportive Aye. as well. You know what I mean. And mm-hmm. You're telling them, oh, I'm doing this and that. And Aye. it was obviously it took us a while to get Ouija's done. So every time you were talking about that, you were mm-hmm. getting. A, I was getting a bit kind of like stressed because I Aye. produce it as well. So you're getting a bit stressed that people are, are asking you, about, oh, when's it coming out? When's mm-hmm. it coming out? When's it coming out? And you're just like, oh God, there's so many, there's so Aye. many variables to that question that mm-hmm. you're finding tough to answer. Aye. So, I, but as I say, like, there is definitely people to talk to, there's mm-hmm. services to talk to, there's mm-hmm. a lot of people doing a lot of amazing things in it. So it's, I'm really lucky with mm-hmm. the people and support I had and I hope that if anybody in my life would come out and talk to me if, yeah. they, if they were struggling or, or even if there was any actors or anybody watching this, mm-hmm. um, if they're looking... Not that I'm like Robert De Niro or anything yeah. like that, of course I'm not. Um, but if they're looking for like, advice or help yeah. or support or even somewhere to go, I can, I can reach out. Brilliant. What, what's the what's the best bit of advice you've received? Do you know, it was probably just don't take it so seriously. Yeah. Like, yeah. you can take, of course, if you're in a job, take the work seriously, mm-hmm. but just don't take things so seriously Aye. or personal. And I was like, oh God, I... Just, do you know what I mean? Just, just it, you need to remember that's like when you when you're in college, it is all fun and you're getting the best yeah. roles and it's all great. Mm-hmm. You're off pal and you're going out. Aye. You get into the real world, not just in acting, but anything. It's mm-hmm. tough. It's really yeah. tough. But just remember, like, just don't take things as seriously. Just yeah. remember to have a laugh. Remember to have a life mm-hmm. as well. Um, don't. It, it can become all consuming. You know yeah. what I mean? Just yeah. have a life. Mm-hmm. Have. Out, interests outside acting, yeah. go out with your pals, Aye. go to football, do whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was really, really good advice for me. Mm-hmm. Just kind of like, don't take it so seriously, Aye. man. It's just, just get on with it. And do you feel that, that you need that balance of other things away from acting to kind of take your mind away from it? Hundred percent. I mean, even see, <laughs> what, see about. I think we were two years into filming Ouija's and it, it was just getting referred to as the W word by people <laughs> close to me. And I was like, don't say it to me. Like, just don't ask me about it. Like, that's how bad I was getting. Like, don't say it to me. Um, but of course, you've just died. It's, it's just keeping things in perspective. Aye. It's like, have the, aye, as I say, have the interest in your yeah. life. For me, I love playing like football. I've gone to the football mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm interested in sports mm-hmm. and I'll, I'll just still going to the theatre and Aye. just having that mindset of trying to like see go to the theatre or go to the pictures but don't always have in your head oh, how did they get that job oh, how did they get that Aye. job just enjoy Aye. it for what it is and don't take things so seriously switch off it no sound advice um I always ask everybody that the whole point of this is to speak to people in Glasgow or run about Glasgow that have went away and done something that they really want to do, they've, they've grabbed something or they've got a career or are, they're working in an industry that they love. I always ask my guests if there's anybody they know that they think would be good or if they've got a journey that would be brilliant to share. So no pressure, but is there anybody that you that you have in mind? Um, I mean, obviously I'd give a big shout out to all the, all the folks involved with yeah. who mm-hmm. each and every one of them have got their own 
story yeah. about how, how they came to this this point. But there is somebody in my personal life, mm-hmm. um, and I wouldn't say her name just because she would probably kill me. But she <laughs> has literally had everything that life can throw at her. Mm-hmm. Um, so many tough things she's been through. Just really no had a fair crack of the whip. Yeah. Um, but she's come through to Glasgow now. Mm-hmm. Um, she's a year sober. And she's starting um, uni tomorrow Brilliant. to study towards becoming a social worker and right. help people and give a bit back. So mm-hmm. um, definitely her. Right. She uh, She's a wonderful person. Mm-hmm. And I just hope she knows that I'm proud of her. Right. And I'll always be in her corner. But she's um, uh, it's just an amazing story. So I think that would probably be someday I would, I would Brilliant. champion. Brilliant. Right. So I've got my phone here because I get an unbelievable amount of... Random questions in. Oh, man. So I'm just going to go a bit quick fire with them. <laughs> and I've just put out the disclaimer of I've not come up with any of these oh, <laughs> for the starts. Um, who was your childhood idol? Idol? Aye. Oh, um, oh, Ace Ventura. <laughs> oh, nice. Jim, that's that's nice. why I get any acting. <laughs> was it remember, really? the, remember the second, I think was it the second film? The when second when nature was, calls? Aye. That's why. <laughs> Got out a global video in like 1998 or something. Oh, that is why man. I get into it. I loved him. <laughs> that is tremendous. Um, what item do you own that you treasure the most? Told you, mate. Bizarre. Yeah, good, good question. I'm deep and meaningful listeners. Um, do you know what? I've still got a, my grand. My grand passed away when I was young, but she, she was um, dead eccentric, but she's got like this. She won a clock at the Bulls. Right. She came second in the Bulls. Aye. And she got a clock with her name engraved on it. And I've still got it. Like to this day. Um, for that, for being that young to this day, I've still got it in my room. My room. And that's that. what I would grab if it was a fire. Aye. Love that. I mean, we might have covered this already, but favourite movie? Favourite movie of all time? See, I couldn't narrow that down to one. Can you talk free? Go for it. Say Rocky. Rocky won. Oof. Good fellas. Right. Something a bit more. I love Inglorious Bastards. Tarantino. Yep. That's pro- I don't know why. It's just probably one of my favourite ones for his. So. Nice. And nice. a special mention for Back to the Future. Nice. I can't believe you never picked Rocky for that. I know, I know. <laughs> Beating Drago in his own oh, country. Mate. Like. <laughs> right there, William. Uh, if you weren't in acting, what job do you think you would have ended up doing? I suppose uh, an interior designer is too easy to say. And because I failed at doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> geez, oh. Uh, I'd say teacher, drama teacher. Teacher, nice. What skill would you love to master? Anything to do with DIY. Honestly, uh, God. So my, my dad, my brothers, they're all uh, joiner, plumber, electrician, uh, and I am awful <laughs> at anything to do with it. And it's not me trying to like put myself down. It's just uh, I can't do it. Do you attempt it or do you just be like, no? Nah. I did when I was younger. Like my, my dad used to do stuff about a house. My brothers would be kind of amongst it, but I was never, ever. <laughs> Never allowed near anything, honestly. <laughs> terrible at it. But I would love to be good at it. I'm still at that. What small thing annoys you the most? Small thing? Eight littering. Mm. That counts. No, that counts. That'll be, that's the, that <laughs> that's the promo clip in it. <laughs> Hate littering. Cutting edge news here. <laughs> or worse, see if you're walking down the street and you see somebody there ah, and there's like a bin. I know. Just you don't so want to be that guy. Stupid, it? Ah, right. just, ah. just stop it, everybody. What scares you? Sunburn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Honestly, I know I've got like, kind of kind of dark hair, with obviously a bit of grey in there, but um, I'm the palest guy Aye. ever, as you could probably tell under these lights. <laughs> I get burnt so easy. So, I, I funny, see when I was actually working at the wholesalers, I was Aye. doing the trolleys right. for five hours. And I actually got like prickly heat on my <laughs> arms and it was in spring burn I was working. So <laughs> sunburn? Aye. Oh man. We'll get pelters while that, <laughs> man. Outside of Scotland, favourite city in the world? 
Toronto. Nice. That just because of the the first job and things yeah. like that. Aye. Yeah, and just a, a great city, great Aye. place, great people. Um, and you feel special because you've got a Scottish accent. I never believed people that used to used to tell me that. Oh, I love you because you're Scottish. Aye. But oh my god, it's true. Fishing autographs as well. It's even better, isn't it? That's it, isn't it? You know what I mean, loving the dream. Oh, here's one that will play to your ego. If there was ever a film made about you, who would play you? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Eh. Obviously, the the ages are different, but I love James McAvoy. I uh, just honestly, he is a massive uh, inspiration for me. And um, fair on that, and because it'd probably be like a zero budget film if it was about <laughs> me and my wee brother. <laughs> <laughs> sort of looks like me, so he would probably get the. He's looking at that. People are a bit raging at his second in this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last one. What TV show would you like to be in? Anyone at all in the world? It's on the now. Anything. Anything at all. The world. Um, God, good question. So I love The Office UK. Mm -hmm. um, in Scotland, I love Two Doors Down. Wow. Which is in a uh, casting director's listing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do actually love it. I'm watching that now. Um, so good. And I've started, uh, I'm a bit behind, but I've started Stranger Things recently. I've not seen that. Oh, it's really I've good. not seen that. Really good. Freaky, but pretty aye. good. Aye. Aye. Did he see you and two doors down? You will let Elaine see Smith's son or Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that show, but I honestly think as, as in, in Scotland, man, that is such a good show. Aye. Like, really, really enjoy it. so relatable. If I see in like two months you're on this, I want a credit. That's it. <laughs> You'll, you'll, get a, you'll, you'll get an agent. Get a job as an agent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last question that I want to know obviously, MD that's done bar work for nine years, there must be some standout moments in dealing with the general oh, public. What? <sighs> Got a couple. One of them's probably, it's, no, it's not even really that funny. It was um, obviously working up the stairs. It's that loud. That you're just, you can't, you can't, I can't hear anything. And um, I was just working away. The bar's quite small, um, serving away. And then, um, I was over at the optics and my mate came and he's like, right, no more for that guy there. Mm -hmm. Just he's, he's just been been an arsehole. <laughs> and I turned around, it's just this old guy. Right. And he's just I've not even serving him. I've had no interaction with him. I've nothing to do with him. Right. But he's looking me square in the eye, right? And he's doing that. <laughs> and he's mouthing the words. Oh, like the music's really like he's mouthing right. the words, I will kill you over the music, right? right. And I'm just looking, I'm just looking and I'm like I'm in a karaoke bar. <laughs> it was like um, Proud Mary was playing on the on the speakers, and, and I'm getting "I will kill you" by this old guy, and I was just like, hey, "Okay, maybe he shouldn't have any more." <laughs> just one of the ones, man. Honestly, it's just and it's just. I mean, everybody that works in bars will tell you the same old stories. People yeah. going off their nut when you've picked up an empty glass, and how was they finish with that? Just <laughs> the same old stuff. But um, another one. This actually made it into the papers. Right. Is um a wee guy came into the downstairs bar with a hoover. Right. Um so Wait for a drink, just brought his hoover with him. Never even wanted a drink, he unplugged the puggy machine. <laughs> <laughs> Put his hoover. <laughs> My big mate was working. <laughs> and I was just like, You're gonna go and you're gonna need to go and tell him to but was Can he, he just, was he hoovering the flare? Ah, it was just it was it wouldn't would turn on, <laughs> but he was just hoovering I. But I think I I don't know I don't why I don't know what was what was going on, but <laughs> I ended up in the papers with, with hoovering up my puddle outside, I think. But I that, that happened when I was working. So Why I'm isn't that like, your first day? <laughs> if that was the first day, like get used to this, because this is it only gets worse. Oh, but no, but I mean, it was a great place to work. I, I, I really enjoyed working there and I made pals for life. Honestly. Character like, building. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? We shy guy that only worked in Dunn stores coming into <laughs> dealing with the hoovers in the in the pub. <laughs> oh man. What's next for you? Obviously Ouija's is massive and you know I'm gonna ask you if there's gonna be an, a season two. Do you know we would love to do a season two? Mm -hmm. Absolutely love it. Do you know the, the stories are there, the scripts are basically there. Mm -hmm. um, we would love to. I think everybody's on board, right. the actors, I think. Um I just money will probably dictate, right. unfortunately. But um Matt and I have got a couple other other scripts and mm -hmm. a few pilots that we're, we're hoping to just kind of send out and, and see where that would go. Um, and maybe even a, another independent project, right. maybe a bit smaller. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's that's pretty much I would love to just be able to be in the writing industry full right. time. So we would love to do that. But I mean, 
we would love a series two. Right. Um, if that's not possible, we do have something else that can right. maybe fill okay. the gap. But again, we'll wait and see. And you have two doors down as well. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? If I'm not in that in two months, there's something <laughs> desperately wrong <laughs> with me. <laughs> Stephen, it's been amazing, mate. I'm so chuffed you've come on and to listen to that kind of journey. And I think for anybody watching it who's in that industry, maybe starting out, gives them a real overview of how it actually pans out as well. But it's been amazing, mate. Oh, thanks very much for having me on. Gary, you're doing amazing things here. So I can only wish you all the best and maybe see you soon. Aye. Never know. I'll get the full Ouija's cast on for season two. <laughs> That's that if we can afford them. <laughs> thank you, mate. No, Loved thank it. you, mate. Thank you. Brilliant.